What's up everyone? In today's video, we're going to cover exactly what happened in the stock market today and some very, very important things to know about. If you've been looking at the stock market lately and felt that it's a little bit overbought and considering shorting it, I promise you in today's video, you won't feel alone anymore. Some crazy news came out where some of the most powerful people in the world are actually shorting US stocks. So stick with us towards the end and we will definitely touch on that. But we also have a lot of great setups going into tomorrow and Disney just reported earnings after the bell today and it's all over the place. So make sure to stick with us. But with that being, with that being said, Tom, let's get right into it. Yeah, Mike, the S&P 500 had a pretty volatile day. You know, yesterday we talked about it. It was very choppy. Look at the movement on the five minute chart compared to the movement this morning that we got out of the huge inflation report that we've been waiting for. So with the big inflation report, we actually saw the year over year rate come in right at 4.9%, which was awesome. And we can see here, that means that there's a slight drop. They were expecting somewhere around five or 4.9% for nine percent there. You can see the forecast and the, and the consensus. It was really good for us to come in there at 4.9, just slightly lower, indicating that inflation is still falling slightly. And the market had a big boost up this morning from this. The SPY was running. Apple was up. Amazon ran up this morning and all day long as well. AMD was blasting up all day long with this news. And Mike, whenever I start to look at some of these inflation numbers, it's pretty interesting to look across the board. Like we actually see health insurance going down. Gas is going down. Uh, I will say the used cars and trucks are pretty good to see falling as well. But then to the upside, you know, like frozen frozen vegetables are up like 18.9%, eggs here 21.4%. So we're definitely seeing some things increase and a lot of things decrease though as well. Yeah, so these are all year over year numbers. And I guess the main takeaway is that inflation is still too high it's still too brutal and we need inflation to calm down even more but looking at the chart that tom has on the screen right now 4.9 percent inflation year over year is a whole lot better than 9.1 percent inflation so it's like it's bad but it's showing signs of getting better and it's nowhere near as bad as it was like a year ago yeah, exactly. And the feds just raised rates again last week, you know, by 25 basis points. And maybe that'll help push us even lower here over the next couple months. Whenever we start to see the other CPI reports start to come out in June, it looks like June 13th there. So be ready for that. We're going to have a big report there. But I will say, you know, the market had a big swing up with that mic and then fell all the way down and then started running all the way back up. And I'm starting to look at some of these stocks like Apple and Microsoft and a lot of stocks like this. And while I think that they have a lot of momentum in the short term and they might continue up, I cannot believe what we saw today in this article about the UAE shorting billions of dollars of U.S. stocks. This seems like a humongous revelation for the market, Mike. And, you know, we talk about big money on the channel all the time. It doesn't get much bigger than the UAE royal officials there. <laughs> That's what you call some huge money. Literally, <laughs> these people are shorting billions and billions of dollars worth of U.S. stocks. And it's like, this is something you literally don't see every day. Like, do you, do you even see this like every couple of years? Like, probably not. Like, it's just such a interesting uh, situation here. And what's even more interesting and slightly concerning is that uh, these UAA, UAE royal officials didn't even disclose which U.S. stocks they're shorting. So we really don't even know <laughs> what stocks they're betting against. But either way, it's not necessarily uh, news you want to see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if we go out to some daily charts on some of these stocks, you know, it makes sense. Like, look at Microsoft right now. It's approaching a humongous resistance around 315 to 320. That's going to be huge for them coming up. Apple is actually getting very close to all-time highs, Mike. We're within 10 points right now of hitting all-time highs on Apple. So that's pretty big. This recovery has been one hell of a one ever since the beginning of the year. Apple started it literally like January 1st. That was like the low. And then we said, well, January 3rd, I guess, was, was the... Uh, Day the market opened there but besides that it, it was a huge run-up ever since then and that's just such a big thing to see them starting to short this and you know the uae what do they deal with a lot oil and different stuff like that 
I'm also looking at stocks like Oxy Mike. You know, they had a pretty bad drop down today. If maybe they know that the price of oil might stay a little bit lower, maybe they'll even be shorting some of these oil stocks too. There's just so many stocks that are overextended at the moment. Yeah, I mean, when I think of overextended stocks, the first one that comes to mind is good old NVIDIA. It's like, yeah, it's such a powerhouse intraday, but you know, when you look at that daily chart and what is it up, Tom? I think like 175% or something crazy over like, you know, the past couple months. Oh, you could say like 170%, still crazy. And uh, you have to ask yourself, like, you know, are these crazy runups that we've seen all across the market over like the past year or so, are they justified? And for some stocks, they are. But for others, it's I don't know. It, it's tough. Yeah, exactly. Like NVIDIA is obviously a powerhouse. And at some point here, I think that just given market dynamics alone, we're going to have to see some pullbacks because if we get like one bad piece of news or one bad event start to come out here, I think that some of these stocks could pull back anywhere from, you know, 25 to 30 percent from where they are. Like, look at that. If, if NVIDIA pulled back like 20, 25 percent, they'd be falling back down to 220, 200. They would still be up like, you know, 90, 80 percent plus, uh, you know, year over year. So it's pretty big to see NVIDIA still, you know, up this high and just all these stocks running up the way they are. So just be very careful. But I will say day by day, they're still very strong in the short term, Mike. It's just it's it's one of those things where I think loading up on shorts, it's going to be an, an important thing to be patient and to maybe wait for that downtrend to start to really happen first. Yeah, so we'll see. But Tom, speaking of shorts and just stocks falling, Disney has not had the best earnings release so far. Right when they reported, they were literally all over the place. It was just like back and forth, back and forth. And as of right now, Disney stock is falling, but it's not crashing either. So what do we have going on here? Yeah, you know, Disney's really falling down, lingering around 98. I hope it goes flat to slightly back to the upside because I actually see some light at the end of the tunnel whenever I start looking at a lot of the numbers and what went on here. So their subscriber numbers were down. And if we go down here and look at the bullet points, they came in at 157.8 million versus 163.17 million expected. But the revenue actually still beat expectations, even though those subscriptions came in under expectations and earnings per share came in right around the expectation or right at it. So uh, it looks like those numbers are actually pretty good. You know, they beat here, came in right at expectations there and slightly missed on their total subscriptions. But what was really good for me with Disney is they had price increases that helped increase their average revenue per user of 20% to $7.14 uh, cents Per, uh, for domestic subscribers. That is huge, Mike. That's helped offsetting their 20% fall uh, revenue for uh, Disney Plus Hotstar and other issues like that that they've had that help push them down. So it's good to see that average revenue per user come in at 20%. So I do think that there's some chances that Disney could still be above $100, maybe by the end of the week. But for right now, it seems like they're just really flat. So now for what everyone cares about, and that's Disney stock. It's like when we look at it right now, it's definitely downtrending. Tom, if you had to give us like the most important levels to the upside and the downside for tomorrow, uh, what would you look at? Yeah, so Disney's been kind of channeling lately. There's been a big channel between like 96.40 to 97, all the way up to like 103 to 104 here. Um, I'm really watching everywhere between here. $100 is going to be a huge huge resistance for me tomorrow. If Disney's able to break back above that, I might even watch it back to the upside. Now we've seen a few earnings recoveries the next couple of days on some of the ones that, you know, weren't quite so bad. And then the market started uh, rising the next couple of days. So if we continue to see the market rising, Disney might start to come back a little. And if we were able to break above a hundred, that would be huge. After that, I'm really watching 102.50. That's going to be the next target. So if we break a hundred, I feel like we could have a pretty good rise up to maybe there. But to the downside, this big support around 96.50, if we break under that, I really think we're going to start selling lower, maybe back down to even that low of 91 down here, which was that recent low uh, back in March. So, uh, you know, it, it's it's a hard one with Disney, Mike, because they're in this big channel right now. And that $100 level is just so crucial here. 
Gotcha. All righty. So for tomorrow, uh, we do have a couple more earnings on the schedule. I would not say they're as exciting as Disney, which what we saw today, but we do have a couple exciting ones like JD uh, tomorrow before open as well as FVRR. So that'll be good. And then uh, I would say that's basically it for the rest of the week. Uh, Tom, do you have any other uh, big earnings you're watching? Yeah, you know, that's pretty much it. Some people like to watch Soundhound a little bit. It's a, you know, it's one of those stocks that has some decent moves now and then. But yeah, Fiverr and JD are going to be the main movers. And, you know, watching JD here, these China stocks have been falling down a lot lately. If they get a positive report, they might start to maybe retest $40 or something. So definitely watch that one tomorrow. All right, there we go. Uh, Tom, another stock that went pretty crazy today was Google. Towards the end of the day, this stock just really started running almost better than any other stock. And they actually had news that they're releasing their first ever folding phone for the low, low price of only $1,800. So the stock started booming and, you know, it's kind of interesting news. Yeah, it is. You know, $1,800, that's quite a bit for a phone, but you know, it's almost like two phones in one mic. You know, if it folds, you know, there's almost like two sides to it. So it's pretty interesting to me. This is actually what the phone looks like folded out right here. And this is what it kind of looks like folded up. So obviously it's going to be a little bit thick whenever it's folded up, but it actually looks pretty good. You know, it might be a little thicker than some of the thinner phones out there, but I still think it's interesting. And I know that there's other folds out there like the Galaxy Fold and, you know, some of those phones by Samsung and others. But this is very interesting to come to the market. I'll be honest, Mike, I don't think that this is going to be really a big explosive thing for Google. It might be. Uh, I don't really think it's been, you know, huge really for Samsung with their folds lately. Uh, but, you know, it's but it seems like it really helped the stock here in after hours. So maybe I'll be wrong, but either way, the stock's booming up and, it really started breaking out above this recent resistance today around 110. That's a huge level. And it even pushed like Apple and Microsoft up a lot towards the end of the day too. Yeah, and I was looking at Google on Bookmap earlier today and it had some very interesting movement there as well. So what's going on uh, on that side of things? Yeah, so what was very interesting today is that all morning, Google had a big resistance at 110. Like I said, Mike, on the chart, for Google, that was a huge resistance. If we go to the five minute chart, uh, you can see how 110, we've been bouncing off that a lot the past few days. We've been getting a lot of wicks there. And if we go over to the book map, we can see that once again this morning, there was a lot of sellers stacking up right at 110. Early in the morning, we tried to touch 110. We couldn't break it. So, you know, we started rejecting down before we even really got there. Later in the day, we got back up to 110, broke above it ever so slightly. And then as those sell orders kind of started filling, more sellers started coming in and pushed this stock lower. And then, and then as we can see here, later in the day, all these orders actually disappeared on the book map. And whenever we tested 110 again, the volume was able to break through there. So that was awesome. And we actually ripped up all day long with that event going on, uh, obviously. And it just started pushing higher and higher. So that was a really good potential breakout trade there. And that's a really good way that you could have played the book map today on Google. So check out the link below. Bookmap's awesome for day trading, like I just showed right there. That was a very easy thing to watch. And we have a lot of traders in the Discord who just started using Bookmap who really love it. Yeah, exactly. And Bookmap is basically like x ray vision, but for stocks. Um, you can see everything that's going on behind the scenes. So instead of just looking at a stock and seeing if it's going up and down, you can actually see like the multi million dollar, in some case, billion dollar orders that are, you know, just sitting there waiting to be filled from these hedge fund and like other very large traders. So you can literally see what's going on behind the scenes. And there's not really any other software out there that does it. And what's cool is, like Tom said, we're sponsored by Bookmap now. So if you want to try it out, you can actually get a discount with that first link in the description in the comments down below but Tom it's now time for some setups for tomorrow one stock I'm watching very closely is LI uh, this stock had some decent movement today after they reported earnings their revenue basically doubled year over year and they actually had some great volume today and just awesome price action with a strong outlook. So this is a, uh, you know, it's more of like a speculative type stock, but every now and then it has some uh, very, very good runs. So I'll be watching it pretty closely to the upside tomorrow. Yeah, I think this one's awesome. You know, LI is a pretty 
big movers sometimes. And whenever these EV stocks start to run, especially China plays and stuff like that, they can go on significant moves. So I like LI2 for some momentum. And there were so many stocks today in that market running up. I even saw XPEV, another China uh, EV stock, kind of running back to the upside a little bit as well, especially towards the end of the day. Definitely not as good as LI though. LI was awesome with those earnings, but Microsoft is going to be my first play of the day, Mike. And you know, they've been kind of channeling a little bit lately. And today they started really breaking out. If they're able to get above 313 tomorrow, I'm going to watch for a continuation. It's been so nice to see these stocks continue. Now with Disney down in after hours, it might be a little bit hard to break above this, but I still think that, you know, the momentum definitely can go, especially if Disney starts to recover back up a little bit. Perfect. Um, another stock I'm watching is C-A-N-O. This stock is also uh, relatively risky, and it is another earnings runner. Uh, this stock has what you can call some meme potential where, you know, it's a very low price stock, tons of volumes flowing in, you know, they just reported earnings, and, you know, they're up like 30% today. So um, it is a stock I'll be watching pretty closely, uh, not only for tomorrow, but even going into next week, as I have been following some some uh, big, uh, big money bullish uh, call flow on it. So it's a stock, like I said, a little bit risky, but has a pretty good reward potential. Yeah, I will say I love this one, Mike. It's bouncing off the one dollar support. Normally, supports are you know all over the place with some of these smaller stocks, but there's obviously somebody or something buying this stock up a lot around one dollar. So I'm gonna watch it as well. I feel like this could probably recover back up at least to the top of this channel, maybe a dollar sixty. Maybe even uh, you know a dollar eighty to two dollars there over the next few weeks if this momentum continues. You know these earnings moves can be pretty significant. And talking about earnings moves, you know my next plays an earnings play as well with Palantir. I noticed they were actually holding their ground today very very well, and they're on a very key resistance right around ten dollars and thirty cents. If they're able to break above that and start to break out of this like wedge here, I'm going to really watch for a big move up. That $10 to $10.30 resistance is huge though. But you know, we've been talking about this one a lot the past few days and it's still holding its ground. And I feel like tomorrow might be finally the day it starts to break out again. Perfect. Yeah, it's definitely a runner right now. So keep a close eye on it. But it is now time for the momentum plays. With tomorrow's first one, we have Amazon to the upside. AMZN, Mike. Amazon, one of the best plays in the market lately. They've been really blasting up. Go ahead and make them break above the high of day right around 110.70. Like I said, though, just watch the overall market's momentum because if the market's not really moving, then we have to be a little bit careful. All right. With the next one, we have Zoom or ZM to the upside. ZM, nice intraday resistance right around 64.90. So go ahead and make them break right above there. And with the last one, we have AMD, and this one is to the downside. Yeah, AMD, they had a nice pop today. The intraday support, though, right around 96. Uh, I even see another intraday support right around 95.50. So, you know, there's a bit of, like, two areas here. If you want to be really safe, make them break below 95.50. But if this stock starts to fall, it can really fall. I mean, it's been up so much lately, just like NVIDIA and so many of these other powerhouses. Good stuff. So you guys heard Tom. We have that downside level for AMD. If it breaks below that, we'll be watching it for puts. And then we have the upside levels for ZM and AMZN. If they break above those levels, we're watching them for calls. But with that being said, it is now time for the big money $1.64 million trade of the day. We are looking at CHPT and this one is a little bit advanced but the main thing you need to know is someone put 1.64 million dollars into a call debit spread on ChargePoint. This is basically a trade betting that this stock will rise going forward. Um, they bought the $9.50 strike call options and shorted the $11.50 strike call options for a spread. Um, and the main thing you need to know is that they're betting that this stock will rise. Uh, this trader will make a maximum profit if this stock is at or above $11.50 on June 2nd of 2023, which is the expiration date for the call options. Uh, looking at charge point right now, Tom, um, it's bouncing off of a major support level right around 820. Um, it's pretty oversold and it has earnings coming up. So, you know, it's not looking bad. Yeah, it's really not. This huge support is big down here. And, you know, with us seeing some of these 
uh, smaller cap stocks, you know, a lot of the growth stocks do okay on a lot of their earnings. I feel like ChargePoint could maybe be one of those stocks that, you know, does a little bit better here finally this quarter. So I like it too. This is a lot of money going into this. And, you know, they did make it safer with the spread, but I will say, you know, even some naked calls might not be bad here. Even shares, you know, that's a big $8 support and the stock's really cheap. I mean, honestly, it's only like $8.70. That's that's nothing in the stock market. So it, this could even be a good share options as well. It's very volatile, you know, and I think the overall risk reward situation is good. It's like, you know, maybe if you, you know, scoop up some shares or maybe some calls and right now the stock is, you know, maybe at, you could say $8.80, maybe you cut losses at like $7.75 and maybe you take profits, maybe half at, you know, maybe like just under ten dollars and the other half closer to 12 you know like the overall risk reward situation is just favorable yeah it really is that risk reward's nice and you know that's a really good setup mike i like that with that you know stop down around maybe 775 something like that that sounds really good for shares and uh even for some calls so i like it just if you do get options make sure you get a little bit of time um i know that this one's actually pretty close you know about a month out but you know what I mean? Like it could it could take a couple of weeks to get a good move out of it. So just keep that in mind as well as those earnings start to come up, you know, towards the end of May. That's another thing. It's like, you know, I'm not necessarily expecting this stock to be up 20% tomorrow, but you know, it can definitely take some time. But you know, a month out's not too, too far. Um, another you could say risk to keep in mind is that earnings is in a couple weeks as well. So maybe calls would be the better move compared to shares because you know, calls, you know, um, you, it, it's just, it's better for like explosive moves and uh, earnings can definitely benefit them. So keep a close eye on it. Yeah, hundred percent. And I will say, Mike, you know, charge points just one of those big plays that it's it's in that EV sector, and those EVs are just so volatile. It's you can catch such good plays, but at the same time, a lot of these EV companies are going to probably go under over the next you know five to ten years. The ones that don't make it, so we have to keep that in mind too. Exactly. And one side note, uh, if you guys are watching this video and you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Make sure to subscribe. When you do, you'll see our videos recommended to you more often. So definitely do that. But Tom, we're set for a pretty exciting day tomorrow. Uh, we actually saw some decent volatility in the market today, which is awesome compared to those two boring days on Monday and Tuesday. But besides that, do you have uh, any last minute thoughts? Yeah, it was really nice to see us recover up end of day. Google definitely helped us out, which makes me feel like that we might continue up here for a couple more days. So I feel like it's just one of those weeks where you have to really ride the momentum right now. If that momentum continues up tomorrow, I feel like there'll be a lot of opportunities for calls. At the same time, though, it's like we're so overextended on like a you know three to six month basis here. I feel like we're going to start to fall eventually over that time frame. But for now, you know, this momentum is amazing. There we go. Last but not least, we want to give a giant shout out to today's member of the day, uh, MSM in the Stocked Up Discord. You've only been in the chat for around a month so far, but your activity has been awesome. So definitely make sure to keep it up. And uh, with that being said, guys, thank you guys so much for watching and let's have an amazing end to the week.